right next we're going to get the Pareto curve or Pareto chart from the customer spend distribution data. Now remember a, a Pareto chart is basically uh, the total amount of sales that's coming from the top X percent of your customers where we're varying X percent from 10 percent to 20 percent etc etc etc. So the first step to being able to do this is getting the rank of every customer. So imagine I just naively got the rank of this customer from within this cohort. That's basically what this does over here. And as you'd expect, customers that have lower spends, you know, this customer has a spend of 125, they have a very high rank relative to this customer who has a much higher spend. So the higher your spend, the lower your rank. You can see this customer over here is amazing. <laughs> I spent he or she spent 1,973 bucks, and has a rank of 59. So that's one of the best customers from within this cohort. But the issue is Excel does not break ties. So if multiple cu uh, customers have the same total spend, uh, this will assign them the same rank. So it's easiest to see this when we sort the data by total spend. So you can see all these customers have spends of zero. They're all given a rank of 1,401. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the tie. And we're going to break the tie by adding this term that says, find me how many times I've seen a particular value before. That's basically what this is doing now. It's saying, look from the top, from this cell over here, and find how many trailing uh, cells have that same value as this one. So let's say I did that. Now let's say I copied and pasted this formula all the way down. What we see it's doing is, is it's breaking the ties of all of these customers with spends of zero. So you can see that there's a whole bunch of them, and they're given ranks of 1,401 all the way up to 1,537. This customer looks like a zero, but he actually, he or she spent 35 cents. And then uh, as the spends go up, the ranks go down, and we can see over here our very best customer has a spend of 22,610. Won't see any ties for spends like that. So that part is relatively simple once we've made that adjustment to break ties. Now what we need is to get the percentile for each customer. So there's this concept of the percent best customer. So customers with spends of zero, those are bad customers. Let's see how many customers we have in the cohort. Obviously we computed that before, but we could very easily get that by just getting a count of the number of customers. Somehow that's not showing up correctly. But what if we summed up this then? There we go. Okay, so the percent of the best customer is just going to take the customer's rank and it's going to divide it by the total number of customers in the cohort. So it's saying this is one of the worst customers. This customer over here is one of the best. And now we want to round these figures to tenths just to make it prettier to plot. So this is going to be percent best customer rounded to tenths. All we do to get that is we're going to round up this number to the first decimal. So all these customers that have a percent best that's north of 90% get rounded up to 100%. These customers who are really, really good, they all get rounded up to 10%. <coughs> so this kind of buckets the customers. And now, what do we do? Uh, as you could expect, we're going to pivot table it. So we're going to 
sum up the spends from within each percentile. So insert, pivot table, let's keep it on this table. Let's just put it right over here. So here now, the rows are going to represent the percent of the customer rounded to tenths. And the cells will be the total amount of spend by that group of people. So this is saying the best 10% of the customers generated, you know, call it $335,000 worth of sales. So as we've done before, we're going to uh, copy and paste the values. Let's convert these into percentages. We're going to add a zero percentage cell. Uh, for reasons you'll see in a minute. Let's move this up. So this is kind of the best X percent of customers. And this is total spend by each decile. Now we want to compute the total spend by each decile to cumulative spend by each customer decile. So that's going to be equal to the it's going to be equal to itself because it's the first one in the set. And then each subsequent element is going to be the prior cumulative spend plus the the spend from the new decile. So I'm going to copy and paste that down. Let's center that. And then let's get the cumulative uh, spending as a percent of total spend in the cohort. That's what this represents. So we know our total spend is this number right over here. This is total spend across the customers. So the cumulative spend is a percent of the total spend in the cohort. It's just that figure divided by this figure. Like so. And now we can make our plot. So the plot is just going to be this data against this data. down over here. Let's max this at 1. Let's max this at 1. And now it's really important to put the axis titles on this chart. So I'm going to add both the axis titles here and here. So again, what does this represent? First, let's see all the deciles. Top X percent of customers This is total sales from top X percent of customers, percent of total. So this would be called the Pareto chart for sales for the Q1 2017 cohort. And just for good measure, let's add our data labels up on top. done.